I would love for you to tell me some of the myths about being a vegan. Some of the myths about being a vegan. Okay, the number one thing is where do you get your protein? Oh my God, you well, know, where do you? people think <laughs> you're gonna die, you know. Um, where do I get my protein? Well, first of all, I have a protein powder that I like to put in my smoothies in the morning. You gotta be careful of those protein powders because some of them have a lot of whey in them. And to me, I stay away from that because it's a byproduct of cheese. And then even the soy protein isolate, I don't like because that has, um, you know, it's a concentrated, heavily processed part of soy. So I get mine from, from raw sprouted, like broccoli sprouts and, you know, live enzymes and everything. I love starting my day off like that. So mm -hmm. I know I'm already getting like 16 grams before nine o'clock in wow. the morning. Wow, that's great. And for me, you know, people I say, well, where are you getting your protein? I'm like, well, how much do you think I need? Yep. And they go, I don't know, but are you getting enough? It's right. just like this distraction. It's like we've been programmed to think that you need protein from meat, which is not true at all. I also get mine from tempeh. Tempeh is a really good source of protein. Quinoa has a lot of protein in it. Um, spirulina, uh, there are a lot of sources where you can get enough protein. And so I get, you know, between 50 and 60 grams of protein a day. And that works out really good for me. Wow, that's that's a lot. And and people think we're not getting enough protein. But actually, a lot of times people get too much protein. Right. The average American gets too much protein, which is really hard on our kidneys and our liver to process all of that. So it's like, um, that is a myth that we're not getting enough protein and then you can only get it from animal products which is just simply not true. One wow. of the things I like to tell people like beans and lentils, lentils are the most underrated product on the planet in my view because lentils it's like hardly any fat with meat you're getting all kinds of saturated fat that's just clogging up right. you know your arteries right. and with lentils they're very alkaline, much more alkaline than meat. Meat's very acidic, and so that will start leaching all the calcium uh, from your right. bones. And then, uh, let's see, th so the fat is a lot lower. It's got more um, alkalinity and the fiber. You know, where, where do people on all these meat-based diets get their fiber? You know, when they're asking us, yeah, right. But they're asking us, where do you get your protein? We should be saying, well, where are you getting your fiber? Yeah. Where are you getting your calcium? Where are you getting your, you know, phytonutrients and all of these things that are just as important, if not more important than, than protein. Point. Yep, very good. So protein is one big myth. Yeah. And another big myth is calcium. Right. Oh my God. If you're not right. drinking milk, milk from a cow, you're not getting enough calcium. Yeah. Which, of course, isn't true either because, and I can say this because I grew up on a dairy farm and there are millions of dollars put into advertising telling us and manipulating us into thinking that we need to get calcium from cow's milk. Right. But you can get calcium from kale, from bok choy, from dates, from uh, blackstrap molasses. There are so many different sources of calcium that are equally, if not better for you, than cow's milk. And then you're not contributing to global warming with all the methane gases and you know it's better for the animals because Lord knows I heard enough of the calves being pulled away from their mothers and the mothers grieve intensely when wow. that happens That's and so sad. you don't get that energy right you know that feeling of oh what is the feeling it's just feeling of lonely and, and discouragement lonely or... and just grief I mean yeah. a lot of grief definite grief yeah so yeah it's like you will get enough calcium if you're smart about it you can't be a junk food vegan which I was for a while I thought as long as I'm not eating animals I'm okay but um, you have to be mindful of the amount of calcium you do need and the amount of protein that you need and omega threes and all of right. that too right that's, that's a great, great point to bring up about the calcium. So what's another myth? Well, another myth that I hear a lot of people saying is that you'll never be able to go out to restaurants anymore. You'll never be able to be part of your friend's community anymore. Be ostracized. Yeah, I know. And you know what, Karen? That is in our DNA. Yeah. You know, if you're outside the tribe 
in our DNA, it's saying you're going to die. If you're yeah, not oh, part of this community, right. you will be outside and you will not have a good chance of survival. So when people just say, oh, it's, it's easy to eat at restaurants, it goes deeper than that. It really right. goes into our whole DNA of survival, like we want to be part of the tribe. And, you know, it, it's a little bit of a learning curve when you go out to a restaurant, but what I've found to be easiest is that you just go to a Thai place or Mexican place or Chinese, and you're always going to be able to find a vegan option, and you don't even have to say anything to your friends. Right. You just say, I'd like number 17, you know, it's all vegan, and that's good. And another thing is you can just tell the waitress or the wait person that, um, make me anything without animal products, and just surprise me. And in the really good restaurants, the chefs love this because they're so used to making the same thing yeah. over and over and over. When you give them free reign and you just say, hey, make me anything with any vegetable you have, and you're also telling them, I'm not a, a trouble child, right. you know, it's like, I'm not going to be, um, you know, a pain in the butt here. You, you just make me anything. And they get to express their creativity. Exactly. Any kind of brown rice you have, any kind of anything without animal products. And you wow. have to tell right. them, you know, that, you know, like mayonnaise actually has eggs in it. Right. So sometimes they don't always know. So you give them a few little tips, but, um, I found that it's actually very easy once you have a few things and another thing is to not be afraid to ask for what you want and this goes deeper into psychology too because if people are afraid to speak up and express who they are you don't have to be a bitch about it right you know right. you don't have to be a angry person but are we able to ask for what we want so these animal issues are actually taking us a lot deeper into our own personal growth as well. Yeah, wow, good point.